with the latest thing from our friends at Springfield Armory. Springfield Armory makes a great variety of products, uh, pistols and rifles and all kind of stuff like that. They uh, do a great job on it, but they're one of our foremost manufacturers of 1911 pistols. They make a good variety of them. They've made them for years. They've really become respected in the industry as one of the finest makers of 1911 pistols that a shooter can afford to buy. Uh, you can get in spend a whole lot more on a custom pistol or a high-end pistol and not get any better a pistol than you can get from Springfield Armory. Not too long ago, Springfield Armory introduced their Garrison model 1911 pistol 45 ACP. Today, they're introducing the Garrison in 9mm. This is everything that the Garrison 45 was and continues to be. It's just in the 9mm chambering. Uh, some people look down their noses at 9mm, especially 1911 guys, because typically 1911s are 45s, and I am a 45 guy myself, but there is nothing in the world wrong with a 9mm. It's probably the most popular pistol cartridge that's ever been for a center fire anyway and uh in modern loadings a nine millimeter really doesn't give up much to its larger bore cousins nine millimeters are great round and it's good to see that springfield armory is bringing out their garrison in nine millimeter the 9mm Garrison is available in either blued carbon steel, as the example I have here, or they're also available in stainless steel. The uh, blued version is uh, forged carbon steel. The slide and the frame are forged. Very nicely blued. This is a, a basic 1911, but it's got a lot of features that you want on a 1911. The uh, slide has a uh, angled cock inserations as you typically see on a 1911 pistol angled towards the front of the pistol and it located at the rear of the slide the finish on the garrison is very nicely done blue it's a uh, evenly done it's it's a nice commercial blue there's uh, nothing cheap about this finish it's not some kind of cheap phosphate or anything like that the uh, s slide flats are polished and the uh, the rounded top of the slide is left matte which is a wonderful thing because it won't be glaring off with the top of your slide when you're trying to get a sight picture the ejection port is lowered and flared so that you don't have uh, stove pipes and other kinds of jams relating to the size of the ejection port. A lot of you folks probably don't remember this, but back in the day, the ejection ports were smaller and they weren't flared here on the back. And uh, one of the first things you had to do when you spent a fortune on a colt was to go and have the ejection port uh, lowered and flared so you didn't jam up when you're trying to eject all the time. This is already done. All these uh, reliability enhancements that have been made to the 1911 during my lifetime are incorporated into the garrison nine millimeter the uh, top of the barrel as a witness hole so you look in there and see if uh, if you're loaded or not or you can do like i do with a, any kind of a typical 1911 with a gi style recoil spring and plug you can just pinch it back a little bit very easy to see if you're loaded or not the barrel is a forged stainless steel five inch national match barrel it's very tightly fit even with the slide rack back there's very little play in it putting the things in the battery there's no play at all in the barrel either at the muzzle end or at the chamber end it doesn't have any slop in it at all it's very tightly fitted which makes for an accurate gun the hammer is rounded and skeletonized and it fits very nicely into the upswept beaver tail grip safety that has a memory bump on it. it it fits very well into the hand you want to get any hammer bite with this thing i've got pretty large hand a lot of meat in the web of my hand and it doesn't even get close to getting up into the hammer on that you don't have any hammer bite with this thing also you can ride the thumb safety down to help with recoil control and it doesn't have any interference with uh dropping the hammer or a lot of times if a memory bump is insufficient i can't ride that hammer down and have enough meat left in the palm of my thumb area there to reliably push down the grip safety and allow the pistol to fire and that's not a problem with the garrison either the nine millimeter or the 45 it lets me drop the hammer every time the thumb safety is right hand only it's extended just enough to where it's really easy to operate swipes up and down with a positive click no problem no slop and uh, it's, it's not big enough to get in your way but it's big enough to where you can use it very easily the recoil system is the gi style with the uh, 
spring plug and spring instead of having a full length guide rod, which I actually prefer in a 1911. That's the way John Browner designed the doggone thing. So it's good enough for him. It's certainly good enough for me. I've got plenty of pistols that have a full length guide rod in them, but I've always really favored the spring and plug system. It just, it works. There's no reason to not use it. The mainspring housing is steel, it's checkered, it's flat, which is the configuration that I prefer. A lot of people might prefer the arched 1911A1 style, but a lot of shooters, myself included, especially those with larger hands, appreciate the flat style more, and I really like a checkered back strap. That with the checkering on the grips makes the gun sit solid in the hand and not squirm around on you when you're trying to shoot. The grips are very nice. They're wood. They're traditional in appearance, but they're not really traditional so much in function because they're thinner than your basic 1911 grips. Makes the gun really feel better in the hand. I prefer a thinner set of grips, as do many shooters, and these are very nice. They're the perfect thickness for me. They are double diamond checkered with the Springfield Armory Cross Cannons logo in them. A good looking set of grips and very effective set of grips. The sights on the 9mm Garrison are very nice, very easy to use. They're low profile three dot sights. The front sight has a single dot in it and it's uh, in the dovetail so it's drift adjustable for windage if you need to. The rear sight is also drift adjustable for windage, has a set screw in the top. It's the Novak style slanted sight with the two dots in it. The three dot sight system is very easy and very quick to use very easy to get on target and very quick to get back on target just a great set of basic sights the trigger on the garrison nine millimeter is very nice it's lightweight aluminum skeletonized with three holes in it it's a uh, got an over travel adjustment screw in it and it works just wonderfully the trigger pull weight on it is very nice it's only a little over three pounds three pounds 2.4 ounces to be exact and it lets off very positively just a tiny bit of take up on the front end of it which allows you to stage that trigger very nicely and then it releases very crisply at only three pounds 2.4 ounces it's a wonderful factory trigger you're not going to do any better than this one the springfield armory nine millimeter 1911 garrison pistol is available right now as you see this they should be on dealer shelves right now Hopefully you won't have any trouble getting you one of these. Sometimes you might have to wait on a new pistol. You know how that is. Everybody seems to want one when they first come out, but you should be able to get you one of these. They've already been sending them to dealers, so these should be available now. The MSRP on these is for the blue model is $849 MSRP. The stainless model is $899 MSRP. You shouldn't have to pay that much to get you one of these, and you should be able to go ahead and get you one of these pretty soon. It's a wonderful little 9mm 1911 pistol from the folks at Springfield Armory. A good all-around load for range use and plinking is CCI's Blazer Brass 115 grain full metal jacket. They're uh, relatively inexpensive when you can find them, when you find anything these days. But uh, you get on LuckyGunner.com, that's where I got these. And uh, the cool thing about LuckyGunner.com is you don't waste a bunch of time looking for ammo and then they don't have it when you, once you find what you want. If it shows up on their website, it's in stock. Another load that I like to keep around for general range work and plink and just having fun with is the 147 grain uh, subsonic full metal jacket round nose from Supervale Ammunition. It's a really neat load. It's uh, easy shooting, just makes for a nice fun day at the range. When it comes time to start getting serious about protecting yourself with a 9mm pistol, it's hard to beat the different loadings from our friend Tim Sundles at Buffalo Boar. Uh, one of my favorites of his is the uh, 147 grain subsonic 1000 feet per second uh, standard pressure low flash load. It's, uh, it's pretty easy shooting, but it's a very nicely designed hollow point bullet and it expands very well. It's been tested, it's been proven, and it's just a great load from Buffalo Boar.
A really neat holster for the Garrison or any other 1911 pistol is the Iron Hide from the folks at Galco. This is a really neatly designed holster. It's a, basically it's a design that Bill Grover, who used to run Texas Longhorn Arms, came up with back in the 90s, I believe it was. But it's it's a, a really ingeniously designed holster. What really sets this holster design apart from other holster designs is its versatility. The iron hide is for semi-auto pistols and uh, Galco makes a similar holster design for revolvers called the wheel gunner. They both work in the same way. The they're very versatile because you can wear it either as a strong side or you can wear it as a cross draw depending on where you put it on your body but that's on the beginning of it it's also a completely ambidextrous holster design to switch this holster over from right-handed to left-handed is very easy you just snap the holster off of the belt slide you turn it around you snap it back onto the belt slide and you've got a left-handed holster the retention strap is also snaps on and off to be reversible and it's just that easy you go from a right-handed holster to a left-handed holster and on left-handed you can also wear it either strong side or cross draw it's a very versatile holster design another cool design feature of grover's original texas high ride design that galco has carried over into their improved model of the iron hide and the wheel gunner too is that it's a two-piece design consisting of a belt slide and the holster proper because of this you don't have any problem somewhere where you need to take the holster off for a short period of time you don't want to get undressed to do it all you got to do is unsnap it and just take the gun and the holster and everything out of the belt slide and it just you know the belt slide stays on your belt you get ready to get back to work you just snap your holster back in and you're good to go it's a very well thought out and very neat design Another real improvement that Galco made to Grover's original Texas high ride design is the, the retention strap system that they use. Grover used a basically a hammer thong, which uh, was the same piece of leather threaded through where it snapped into your uh, belt slide. It came up through the top and just looped around your hammer. So Galco came up with the retention strap design that they use on these, which is reversible for left or right headed shooters. Another neat design feature that Galco incorporated into their iron hide is this hole in the back of the retention strap. That accommodates the different carry modes of the 1911 pistol. Condition 1, also known as cocked and locked, with the uh, hammer back, the thumb, thumb safety applied with a loaded round in the chamber, is how John Brown designed the 1911 pistol to be carried. It's how it's been carried and carried for over a century now and it's worked works wonderfully but some people are nervous about doing it like that some people carry it in what they call condition two which is hammered down on a loaded chamber or condition three which is hammered down on an empty chamber doesn't make a lot of sense because if you're carrying in condition three then you got to rack your slide after you draw the weapon and all that kind of stuff and you may not have time left in your life to do that so the best way to carry it is condition one as it was designed to be carried but since some people are nervous doing it that way the iron hide holster allows you to do either way when you have the hammer back the retention strap just loops over in front of the hammer. When you have the hammer forward, the hole allows the hammer to protrude through the hole so you can still have your retention strap going. Either way, you carry this pistol. It's a very neat design. The iron hide is available to fit a variety of pistols and they're $84 MSRP from the folks at Galco. Springfield Armory's Garrison 9mm 1911 pistol is a lot of pistol for the money. The blued version retails for $849 the stainless version retails for $899 this pistol has got a lot of features for that price you can spend a whole lot more money on a pistol and not get nearly as much as you get with the Springfield Armory Garrison 